Yeah, regarding the uh, state of affairs of mental health in Connecticut, um, it's kind of like the best of times and yet the worst of times here in Connecticut. Uh, because of the state budget issues, there's been some trimming of the level of services within Connecticut. We just finished the legislative session this week and we fought really hard up at the state capitol to preserve things like the uh, Medicare savings program which helps people pay their Medicare Part B premiums uh, and this again is for low income people who if they lost that subsidy would really be forced sometimes to choose between buying food or paying their Medicare co-pays it just was not a good thing to cut that back same thing with the level of Medicare funding there was the husky aid program was going to be scaled back so that people had a higher threshold to meet uh, or i should say a lower threshold to meet as far as their level of, of income before they could qualify for the program and that was going to affect uh, many thousands of people in the state negatively so we were able to get both of those programs restored and fully funded as they had been historically but it was an uphill battle the whole way and uh, it's interesting because I could literally spend an hour talking about the different ways the mental health care system in the state of Connecticut could be better, but we are overall, relatively speaking to the rest of the country, in a good place. Uh, an organization called Mental Health America recently, uh, within the last year, evaluated all 50 states for their public mental health systems. And Connecticut, believe it or not, came in at number one. And when I tell people this, typically their jaws hit the floor. They're like, what? And that just reflects the relatively poor level of services that are available in some of the other states in the union. Because again, I could tell, spend an hour talking about things that we could do here in Connecticut to make the system better. Um, right now, there is a fairly good array of services, but not everything is available to everyone. Uh, and certainly for people on private insurance, uh, it's a really an issue. Um, NAMI recently came out with a report called The Doctor Is Out, where they evaluated mental health parity throughout the United States. And Connecticut, which again, overall has a very robust public mental health system, struggles with the whole concept of parity in the private space. And par when I say parity, I'm saying that someone who had, say, a broken leg or had cancer or diabetes gets a certain level of service, whereas someone with a mental health condition like schizophrenia or bipolar or severe chronic depression doesn't get that same level of service or access to service. Uh, the numbers are rather stark. Um, about 3.4 percent of the uh, people with a medical health condition ended up having to get services out of their provider network whereas when you talk mental health services it was like 33 percent it was just stark how much harder it is for people to access in-network mental health services here in Connecticut and it was a real shock to a lot of people and uh, we uh, again this year and we've done this several years now, have tried to get some legislation passed on this to try to, just at a minimum, get the data from the insurance companies so we can truly understand the scope of this. Because the report that you know NAMI did, there was also another report by a group called Milliman Group that also had similar conclusions. You know, they got their information from polling people. And you know, that's inherently good information, but it's not the actual real numbers. The only people who can provide that, obviously, are the insurance companies themselves. And they basically fought tooth and nail against this. And uh, we did not prevail this year, but we'll be back next year.